Hello, hello, grade 12. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at organic chemistry, the factors affecting physical properties of organic compounds. And let's get right into the lesson. Ra so here we have our physical properties, which are your melting point, boiling point, vapor pressure, and viscosity. Now we'll be looking at the intermolecular forces acting in each of the homologous series that we have. And then we'll be looking at the relationship of physical properties and the strength of the intermolecular forces. Now to start off, let's look at the definitions so that we understand the concept and the terminology of the topic. Then we have boiling point. It says this is the temperature at which the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Melting point is the temperature at which the solid and liquid phases of a substance are at equilibrium. Then vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by vapor at equilibrium with its liquid in a closed system. Viscosity is the resistance of a fluid to flow. So the fluid can either be a liquid or gas. Now here we are given a table of columns. In the first column, in the first column we have alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. And all this homologous series, they have compounds that have induced dipole, dispersion, or London forces. In the second column we have haloalkanes, aldehydes, ketones, and esters. And the organic compounds in here have London forces and dipole-dipole forces. Then the last one we have alcohols and carboxylic acids, which they have London forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. Now the carboxylic acid has stronger hydrogen bonds because of its two sides of hydrogen bonding, while the alcohol is only one hydrogen bond site. Now we know the London forces are the weakest of all the intermolecular forces, followed by dipole-dipole forces, and lastly the hydrogen bonds being the strongest intermolecular forces. In that order in the columns, you have the ones from the the ones with the weakest intermolecular forces to the ones with the strongest intermolecular forces. So your alkane have weakest intermolecular forces and your carboxylic acids, the strongest intermolecular forces. Now let's look at the factors affecting the strength of intermolecular forces. Number one, we have the chain length. They say the longer the chain, the stronger the London forces, or the shorter the chain, the weaker the London forces. Now if we increase the chain length by adding the number of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms, we are simply making our London forces stronger. So that is increasing the surface area of the organic molecule. So a larger surface area results in a stronger in, in results in stronger intermolecular forces. Then number two, we have branch chains. It says the more the branches, the weaker the intermolecular forces. By adding in more branches, we are simply decreasing the chain length, right? In that way, we will have weaker intermolecular forces. Remember, if the surface area is short or small, then we have weaker intermolecular forces. But if the surface area is larger, we have stronger intermolecular forces. Now, number three speaks of the number and type of intermolecular forces. They say hydrogen bonds are stronger than dipole and London forces. Dipole, dipole are stronger than London forces. Then here, we are looking at different homologous series. So for the two, the chain length and the branch chain, here we are comparing things that are in the same homologous series. We are comparing compounds in the same homologous series. But for the last one, we'll be comparing compounds that are in different homologous series. Now let's look at the relationship between physical properties and intermolecular forces. We have the first physical property, the boiling point. The boiling point increases with an increase in the strength of intermolecular forces, or it decreases with a decrease in the strength of intermolecular forces. From this, we can deduce the relationship that IMF, the intermolecular forces, 
are directly proportional to your boiling point. That means the stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the boiling point. The weaker the intermolecular forces, the lower the boiling point. Now the second one is melting point. Melting point increases with an increase in the strength of intermolecular forces, or it decreases with a decrease in strength of intermolecular forces. From this we can deduce that the intermolecular forces are also directly proportional to the melting point. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the melting point. The weaker the intermolecular forces, the lower the melting point. Now viscosity increases with an increase in strength of intermolecular forces or it decreases with a decrease in strength of intermolecular forces. From this we can also deduce that the intermolecular forces are directly proportional to the viscosity of an organic compound. So the stronger the intermolecular forces, the greater its viscosity. The weaker the intermolecular forces, the lower the viscosity of an organic compound. Vapor pressure increases with a decrease in strength of intermolecular forces or decreases with an increase in strength of intermolecular forces. From this, we can see our inverse relationship whereby we know if we have stronger intermolecular forces, we'll have a lower vapor pressure. But if we have weaker intermolecular forces, we'll have a higher vapor pressure. So for vapor pressure, it is the only one with an inverse proportion. Now let's recap on that. We have intermolecular forces are directly proportional to the boiling point. Intermolecular forces directly proportional to melting point. But intermolecular forces inversely proportional to vapor pressure. Now from this we can see that if your vapor pressure is inversely proportional to the intermolecular forces, then it means it must also be inversely proportional to these physical properties, the boiling point and the melting point. So we have the vapor pressure being inversely proportional to the boiling point. That means if we have an organic compound with a, with a greater boiling point, a higher boiling point, it must have a lower vapor pressure. If we have a compound, for example, with a lower melting point, it must have what? A higher vapor pressure. That's inverse proportion. Now we have comparing compounds in the same homologous series. For this one, we have the mnemonic ISSE, which we use it to remember how we solve questions that involve the comparison of compounds that are in the same homologous series. So for I, we say we identify the intermolecular forces. For the S, we compare the structure or surface area. And then for the other S, we compare the strength of the intermolecular forces. And for E, we speak of the energy required to overcome the intermolecular forces. Now let's have a look at that, an example, and see how can we apply that in, in solving a question. Now the question here says, explain the trend in boiling point of the compounds from A to C. So we must explain the trend in the boiling points from compound A to C. Now the first thing to do is to observe what is going on with the boiling points. So from negative 162 to negative 89 to negative 42, we can see there's an increase in the boiling point. But when we look at the compounds, the compounds are also increasing in chain length. From so from methane, we have only one carbon, ethane, two carbons, propane, three carbons. So as we go down from A to C, there's an increase in the chain length, an increase in surface area, an increase in the molecular size. Now, how do we respond to this question? So the first, the first thing we must do according to ISSE is to identify the intermolecular forces of these compounds. 
Now we'll say the intermolecular forces in this compound are London forces. Remember, methane, ethane, and propane all belong in the alkane group, which we know they have London forces according to the table. Then we must speak of the structure or the surface area of the compounds. So for the second point, we'll say the chain length increases from methane to pentane. That means there is an increase in surface area from compound A to compound C. Now for the other S, we must speak of the strength of the intermolecular forces. Now we say the strength of the London forces increases from A to C. That means the intermolecular forces increases with an increase in the chain length. And then lastly, we have to speak of the energy required to overcome the intermolecular forces. Now we say more energy will be required to overcome intermolecular forces in compound C than in compound A and B. Thus, the boiling point increases from A to C. Now let's recap that as a whole. We say the intermolecular forces in these compounds are London forces. The chain length increases from methane to pentane. There is an increase in surface area from compound A to C. The strength of the London forces increases from A to C. That means our intermolecular forces increases with an increase in chain length. More energy will be required to overcome intermolecular forces in compound C than in compound A and B. Thus, the boiling point increases from compound A to compound C. Okay, let's look at comparing compounds in different homologous series. For this one, we will use ISE, which states that we must identify I, the intermolecular forces, S, the strength of intermolecular forces, and E, the energy required to overcome the intermolecular forces. Now let's look at an example and see how we can solve that in a question. Now they say explain the trend in the boiling point of the compounds from compound A to C. Now looking at our boiling points, what is the trend that we see here? We can see there is an increase in boiling point from compound A all the way to compound C. Then when we look at this, we can see that all these compounds belong in different homologous series. Butane belongs in the alkane homologous series. Butanol belongs in the alcohol homologous series. Then finally, the butanoic acid belongs in the carboxylic acid homologous series. Right. So now we are comparing compounds that are in different homologous series. Now, what is that physical property or what are those factors affecting the physical property, the boiling point? Now, let's check. So starting with our I, the first thing we're going to do is identify the intermolecular forces in all these compounds. So we say compound A has London forces, whereas compound B and C have hydrogen bonds. Remember we said the alcohol and carboxylic acids have hydrogen bonds. Then we have to speak of the strength of the intermolecular forces. We go hydrogen bonds in compound B and C are stronger than the London forces in compound A. But now compound C, the carboxylic acid, has two sides of hydrogen bond and compound B, the alcohol, has only one side of hydrogen bond. Now we have to speak of the energy required to overcome the intermolecular forces. We say more energy will be required to overcome the hydrogen bonds in compound C than in compound B and A. Thus boiling point increases from compound A to C. Now let's recap on that as a whole. We say compound A has London forces because it belongs where? In the alkane homologous series. Whereas compound B and C have hydrogen bonds. 
Hydrogen bonds in compound B and C are stronger than the London forces in compound A. Compound C is a carboxylic acid which has two sides of hydrogen bond and compound B is an alcohol with only one side of hydrogen bond. Therefore, more energy will be required to overcome hydrogen bonds in compound C than in compound B and A. Thus, the boiling point increases from compound A all the way to compound C.